Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create this really cool magnetic simulation, which I'm going to play for you now. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that so you can see what's going on there. It's really simple, so let's go ahead and hop right into the tutorial. Alright guys, so I'm going to go ahead and open up a new file here. I'm going to save this one. I'm going to actually delete the light and just the camera. We're just going to focus just on the physics today. So basically, you only really need two things. So I'm just going to go to my side view here. I'm going to duplicate our cube and kind of snap it up there. And now I'm going to go ahead and add in a force field. And now I'm also going to control snap my force field, G, Z, control, and just snap it to the cube. So we have our force field right here. And this is our cube that's basically going to be the magnet, right? So first thing we want to do is go to our force field settings on the right here. For the strength, I'm going to choose negative 200. I'm going to go ahead and click on our top cube here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in a rigid body. I'm going to make this a passive rigid body. And I'm going to add in a collision. You don't have to adjust any settings. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on this bottom cube. I'm going to add a rigid body, make sure that it's active, and then a collision. And now what we want to do is go to our physics settings, turn gravity off, click this drop down for rigid world, and I'm just going to make the speed 10. And now we should have a magnetic simulation if we did everything correct. Just like that, you can see that our bottom cube is attracted to the top cube. Now if we were to take our force field, and move it somewhere else and then play that back, you can see that it's only actually attracted to the force field. The way that we make it appear to be a magnet right here, this cube, is that we put the force field inside of it so it's actually attracting the other object. Now what we can do, since we have all of our physics set up, is I'm gonna go to my side view, I'm gonna move my simulation, my force up here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this cube a couple of times, just like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and shrink this bottom cube, duplicate that, just a few times like that, copy these, and I'm gonna to continue to do that until I have a bunch of cubes. I'm gonna also make them a little bit smaller, and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this just a few more times to show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and save this real quick as simulation, and then I'm gonna go ahead and play this back, and now watch what happens. See what happens? All of the physics settings have applied correctly. And as you can see down here, if you look at your timeline, you'll see this little orange bar. This just means that basically the um, physics have, have uh, what do you call it, baked. So as you can see, when I play this back, everything is still attracted to this main force field here. Again, if you want it to make it look like it is actually still a magnetic cube, you just move a cube right over top of the force field. And now when we go ahead and play here, you can see that all of the magnetic cubes are still attracted to our main magnet here and they only hit the sphere, or I'm sorry, the cube. But let's say we w did want this to be a sphere. I could just go in here, make a bevel modifier. I'm just gonna go ahead and increase the width, segments, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click apply. I'm gonna go ahead and scale that up. Object, apply, scale. And then if I go ahead and press play, as you can see, we have the same effect, but now um, our cubes are interacting with the sphere. As you can see, it takes a little bit longer to render, because there's so many subdivisions. But if I go ahead and play this back, you can see we still have our magnetic simulation. And guys, it's really that simple. Again, you don't have to have your object up here. You can just have the force field and you're still getting the same effect. So that's literally all there is to it, guys. Super simple, quick tutorial. I just wanted to show you kind of how that works. Um, and then, yeah, you can go ahead and add materials. You can pretty much do whatever you want. Once that orange bar goes all the way across the bottom, even though it's not showing up right now, that means you can just easily play back your whole simulation. And of course, I just wanna show you one last thing, actually, this is what should be pretty cool. If you go ahead and click on one of your objects, you insert a keyframe, I'll just insert rotation, I'll skip to frame 50, and then we're just gonna like rotate it this way one time. Insert rotation, so now if you go back, you can see that it moves. Now, if we were to go ahead and play this back, you can see it's actually moving and actually affecting the simulation. Maybe we could make that go on for a little bit longer. Let's go ahead and play this back now. As you can see, it's moving and cubes are sliding past it. So pretty cool. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. So go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this simulation tutorial. And if you want to see more things like this, this was super simple. There's so much that you can do with just this. Um, so go ahead, try your own simulation and let me know what you come up with. Can't wait to see what you guys make. Take it easy. I'll see you in the next tutorial.